let us come before the Lord with hearts ready to serve as we prepare to worship the one who sends us out with his message of hope and salvation. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is out front leading the way. So let's get started. Our morning scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 4, 5 through 8. I really hope you've had a fantastic weekend thus far. I hope and pray that your week has been good as well. Uh, we are in 2 Corinthians 4, 5 through 8 for our morning scripture reading, which reads as follows. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. And that's one thing for sure you gotta remember as we go about entering to this fall season, this election season, this holiday season, all the seasons that come to the second part of this year, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. Remember that part of you don't remember nothing else and it'll keep you going for sure. And you know what else keeps you going? Prayer. Stay in prayer with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we do have a website for that that can help you out, get-prayer.com, where you can submit your prayer request and we can pray for you right here on the show. Did you know that? Submit your prayer request and we can pray for you right here on the show and we will definitely let all the other believers know what's going on and pray that the Lord reveals his will and his mighty works to you in your situation. So with that being said, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we come before you knowing that in our own strength, we often feel inadequate and unworthy to share this gospel. Yet, Lord, your word reminds us that you use ordinary vessels to carry your extraordinary message. Help us to remember that it is not our eloquence or ability that brings others to you, but your spirit working through us. And this is why we need you to help us to remember that through everything you are there, regardless of what season we're in, we're going into a season right now where many people are spending the first fall season, first holiday season without a loved one somewhere. We're going into a season right now, Lord, where there is a high emotion for the future leadership of this country. It has divided homes. It has divided friends, it has divided workplaces, but we know that you're still here. Help us focus on the work at hand that's not of this world. Help us to remember that, again, it's, it's not about our ability, this fancy that brings others to you, but your spirit working through us. We ask for your boldness to overcome the fears, for courage to speak when we feel silenced, and for the wisdom to know that even in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. Equip us, Lord, with the words to say, the love to show, and the grace to reflect your heart. May we trust that you have called and prepared us for this very purpose. And may we walk confidently in the assurance that you are with us every step of the way. Use us, Lord, as your instruments of peace and hope. And let us be faithful in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, so our topic today is feet that go where they are sent. Feet that go where they're sent. And our text comes from the book of Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 15, which reads as follows. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? 
And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your already blessed word. We now ask you, Lord, to say what needs to be said to the masses. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe that God has a calling on each of our lives. He doesn't just save us to stand on the sidelines. He saves us to serve. And when he calls us, he sends us. You see, every one of us has a job to do, and you've been given the ability to do it by Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. That's right. When you came on this earth via birth, you were equipped with skills to do a job, not for the world, but for the kingdom of God. Now, in a world filled with so many voices and so much confusion, God has called us to be messengers of his truth. And friends, the gospel isn't just a task for the pulpit. It's not just the preacher's job to share the gospel. It is a mission for every believer to go out and share what we know as the good news. Our feet are meant to go, our voices are meant to speak, and our hearts are meant to beat with the love of Jesus for a lost and dying world. So my question to you is, is your heart beating for a lost and dying world or for a lost and dying neighborhood? Some of y'all's hearts are beating subjectively and are not beating with the big picture focus of what's going on in this world. You got to love on everybody, including those folks that you don't even love. I'm doing it right there with you. So today, let's open our hearts to thinking about this question we want to ask the Lord. Where are you sending me? Where are you sending me? Have you ever found yourself in a position where you felt like you was going in this direction and you know, didn't have a lot of information, but you just felt like the Lord was leading you in a direction that is just undiscovered country to you. It's, it's out of your comfort zone. It's, it's not what you know. It's around folks you never met, and yet you are there. Folks, we all have been there. I have been there myself. You know, so uh, things don't just come by luck. They, they don't come just by happenstance. They come by the word of the Lord and you being obedient to it. But let's dive into this here. We're going to find we're going to find out more understanding about that question. Where are you sending me? In his letter to the Romans in chapter 10, the Apostle Paul is talking about salvation and he's emphasizing that it's available to everyone, Jew and Gentile alike. You see, the gospel isn't exclusive. It is inclusive. It becomes exclusive to those who believe who submit, who surrender, but it's inclusive to where everybody can come to the cross if you submit and surrender your life to Jesus Christ right now. It's not just for a select few, it's for everyone who will call upon the name of the Lord. But here's the catch. Before anyone can call, they have to believe, as I just said. And before they can believe, they have to hear. And before they can hear, someone has to tell them. The problem with many of our churches today is they are fighting against a level of comfort to go and share the good news of what Jesus Christ has done as per why they are in that church right now. If the person doesn't sound like them, look like them, same the, share the same financial bracket, then they are unsure. The, there are churches that have witnessed whole neighborhoods change culturally and spiritually, and they'll drive right through it to get to church. Here's a question for the fans out there uh, of church outreach. Do you know your neighbors? Do you speak to them? Have you ever invited them to church? Have you ever had a conversation about Jesus Christ with them before you save up all that money to go around the world to do it, have you done it right where you are? If all of these are no, then ask yourself why. What's stopping you? Are you praying for opportunity? For God to send you? Folks, if you pray to be sent, you will be sent, but it's 
the most uncomfortable prayer you'll ever pray because you gotta relinquish a little thing called control. And we all like a little bit of control, don't we? Oh, we pray for God to, 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 to send us out and do a mighty work, but we don't want to do it downtown where we live at. That's not what we mean when, when, when we say that. Some of us out there know what I'm talking about. You wanna go to Honduras. You wanna go to the Asian theater. You wanna go to uh, uh, South America, uh, somewhere in Brazil maybe, or even further south, maybe somewhere in Central America, because in your control of where you're going, there's a particular benefit you're trying to get from it. But if we ask you right now to go downtown to some troubled areas in your community where, you, where they need to hear the gospel, you will find every reason not to go. Better yet, you're not gonna reply to any phone calls. You're not gonna reply to any emails. You'll find some reason not to do it because you know, like we know, like they're gonna know when you go down there, they're gonna feel you're not really for this. You don't have the stomach for missions. You have the stomach to feel good about yourself. You, you have the stomach to go places where you can get self-validation, but you don't have the stomach for missions. You don't have the stomach to go downtown somewhere in America in a Dollar Tree or maybe downtown where all the businesses may have begun to leave and talk to people who may not be living their best life. They think there are, but we know they're not. But hey, that's something you gotta wrestle with when you're thinking about your own salvation. And many are still working on that because they are here and they don't go. In contrast, look at Paul's um, down to earth questions. In Romans 10, 14 through 15, our subject matter today, and then it goes into another portion at the end as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Which leads us to this. God has chosen to use us, his people, to carry his message to the world. Now think about that for a moment. We've been kind of reiterating that throughout the entire message so far. Let's, let's look at it. God in his infinite wisdom has decided that the way the world will hear about his love is through us. And that means we have a responsibility to do what God has called us to do. No, you do not do the saving. You do the introducing. No, you have no power on your own, but only through the spirit of the Lord. In your speech and what we do, that is where they see it all. That is where they understand a life with the Lord. So many times we hear the phrase that sometimes the only Bible people read is through how you live and what you say and how you say it through what you do and how you do it. We can't sit on the sidelines. The gospel is too important. The stakes are too high and, and the time is too short. We've got to be about our father's business and that means we've got to have feet that go where they are sent. Not where you choose to go, where they are sent. So today we're gonna to look at some observations from the passage and highlight the urgency of our calling. God didn't save us to be spectators, of course. He saved us to be soldiers in his army. And uh, readiness is everything when you're part of a unit of any kind of type of military influence because we're in a spiritual war. And in God's spiritual army, his spiritual defense force, we must maintain our readiness and our urgency to respond when we are called to do so. So let's rise up, step out, and go where God sends us. And I'm sure that gets a big amen. Let's look at the urgency of the unheard. You've got to speak up. There's an urgency to reach the unheard. Romans 10, 14 says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? This verse isn't just theoretical. It's a call to action. We can't sit back and assume that someone else will do it. The truth is God's plan involves your voice, 
presence and willingness to step up. Every person in your circle, every soul in your community is a potential recipient of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But they won't know it unless you bring it. The Bible inside of you should be made available in what you say, how you say it, what you do, and how you do it. It's just that urgent. Your feet have to get to moving where God is sending you because faith comes by hearing and hearing needs a herald. And for a time such as this, where we're dealing with biblical illiteracy and spiritual famine, the people need to hear you speak the name of Jesus and present the gospel the best way you know how through your life. And if you think the urgency is not there, take a look at a few connecting scriptures with me. 2 Timothy 3, 2 through 5. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Highlight that one right there. That's a big one. But denying its power, having nothing to do, have nothing to do with such people. What, what did Jesus say? Matthew 24, 6 through 13. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must be happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. There will, then you will be handed over to be prosecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. And at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Do not tell me that's not going on right now. You can't deny it. Even if you don't read your Bible, even if you're listening out of curiosity and you don't even know Jesus, don't like God, you have to agree. This is dead on. This is right on the target of what we're experiencing right here in 2024. If you're telling me that you don't see these things right now, then I'm gonna tell you to start looking up and looking around because you're missing the signs and that's why your level of urgency it's not there, and because it's not there, the heart for your outreach is not there, and because that's not there, you're on the sidelines wondering why you're not on the field in this game called the gospel of Jesus Christ and sharing it to a world that has lost its way. You're not on the field of the Great Commission, and you're sitting there wondering why. Why, why, why? I wanna be on fire for the Lord. There are so many things I have ideas too, but why am I not out there? You're not here. No player is put in a game since it's football season. I'll put it to you like this. No player is put in a football game that they're not even watching. They're goofing off on the sidelines. They're checking the phone. And if they don't even know the playbook, you're really a done deal. Ask any coach. Two things players must do on the sideline is know the job that you've been given and pay attention to the game. Any coach will tell you those are two very important factors on whether or not you play or you get benched. But then there's the urgency of being sent. Go where you're called, not where you're comfortable. One more time, go where you're called and not where you are comfortable. Romans 10, 15 next, how can anyone preach unless they're sent? The key word here is sent. Not everyone who goes is sent, some just went. <laughs> it didn't work out. They got confused and now they don't go. And why is that? Because they went out on their own power and authority to make themselves feel accomplished, to feel good. But there's power and purpose and being sent by God. When you are sent, you're backed by heaven's authority. When you're sent, God opens doors that no one can shut. You're just not doing your own thing. You're on a mission from God. 
Don't get caught up in the comfort zones. Get caught up in your calling. My family has been on many a mission trip. And one time we found ourselves in Maryland helping a church and they set up a community movie. And, uh, you know, a couple of hundred came out, about 200 or so came out. And the preacher was all dumbfounded and all worked up. And, he, he, you know, he didn't understand. I, I thought more people would come out. He went. He wasn't sent. He wasn't sent to really do that. And you could tell anybody be praising God to get that many people out. Here he is, got his head hung down, feeling disappointed. Why? Because there's something inside of his heart that is more about him than it is about God's church. Get over yourself. I don't care who I offend on that one. Get over yourself. If God sends you, he equips you. And if he equips you, he expects you to move. And when you move, you remember you're doing it for the kingdom. Again, this is this is urgent. Don't just go be sent. And then there's the urgency of obedience. Step out and watch God work. If you're going to be part of the kingdom, you want to get out there and you want to be sent, be obedient. Just watch God work through the obedience. Paul reminds us in verse 15, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. That's not about how your feet look. Everybody looking at the toes right now, I'm sure. You're probably laughing about it. But what your it's not about what they look like, it's about what they're doing. Beauty is in the obedience and saying, yes, Lord, and going out, leaving, stepping out on faith. Your obedience is the key that unlocks the blessings of God in the lives of others. When you go where God sends, your steps are ordained, your path is blessed, and your impact is, etern is internal and eternal. Don't worry about perfection. Focus on the obedience. If we just had more people that would just pay attention, simply say, yes, Lord, and do it. Half of y'all wouldn't be in the mess you're in right now. Let's just be honest. I know, I mean, I've, I've done it too. You go your own little route thinking, well, well, I, I, I see that, but I really want, and then guess what, you mess up. And then you go back and do exactly what God told you to do the first time. Okay, so, so what do we learn here? <laughs> Pay attention to God and not our own wisdom and understanding. Lean not to it, I believe the scripture says. But don't worry about the perfection. Step out and watch God do what he can only do through you. There's urgency in this because every step of obedience brings someone closer to God. Now, you might be saying, well, Pastor Rick, I don't know what to say. I'm not sure what to do, but I feel God has sent me. Look at the first part of verse 15 where it says, as it is written. When you see that it means Paul is citing scripture somewhere in God's word, and here he is citing Isaiah 52, 7, which states how beautiful on the mountain are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. The beauty in the feet are in the in motion because they are leading you in the way God wants you to go for the purposes of his kingdom and to your benefit. And you say, I can't do it. Are you saying you can't, you can't proclaim peace? You, you can't bring some good tidings, really? You can't talk about Jesus Christ? You can't tell the world around you God is still on the throne? You really can't do it? Must it always be responsive and not a proclamation? Is the only time you can say that God is still on the throne when the world does something stupid in this country? I mean, are, are you are you really that person that can only respond? Every time the government does something stupid, you, you're the first one to say, well, God is still on the throne. God is, you just need to know that God is still on the throne. Okay, well, can you proclaim that too for the betterment of the kingdom? Must you wait until this country, this world does something stupid before you can say anything about Jesus Christ? How many people, when the Olympics um, opening ceremony came out, said online, God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked in response. But yet any other day of the week, they don't proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what I'm talking about.
that that's that's an issue for me because that means you know the truth you just won't share it and then you complain and it, this is the audacity the shocking truth about us you complain now stay with me you're complaining about the fact that they did what they did no one told them no one told no one preached the gospel to them they're gonna do what they're gonna do and you you were so shocked huh have you done your part? Someone wants to be used by God right now to do something they saw that needs kingdom changes. Be available, be obedient, be faithful, and be ready. Because you got this. You can do this. If you're praying to be sent, just be obedient. That's it. That's all I did. And I broke all sorts of rules. Oh man, uh, the, the the places that I've come from, oh man, they, they'd be so up in there. Well, I can't believe you're preaching there and, and I can't believe you doing that. Oh, that's not what your grandfather did. Guess what? My grandfather, God bless his soul, that was for his dispensation in time. What my parents are doing is for their dispensation in time right now. And what I'm doing is for what God has me doing right now. Why? Because I said I was available. I answered the call to ministry. I'm the one that went to school, worked through the formal training. God sent me there. God brought me out of there. God gave me the degrees. God gave me the opportunity. God gave me the ability. I am his and his alone. And wherever he sends me, I will go. Regardless of denominational standing, regardless of traditions, regardless of cultural barriers, regardless of the race stuff, regardless of the gender stuff, I will go where God sends me. This is the calling that God gave me, like he gave you a calling. You're the one sitting there wanting to do better, wanting to be better, wanting to feel better about where you stand in the kingdom, but you're afraid of breaking all these rules, these, all these unwritten rules the world has about how you're supposed to act as a man, as a woman, as a black man, as a white man, as a black woman, white woman, Chinese woman, regardless of the race, culture, and the nomination and traditions and all these things, what did God tell you to do? Are you a believer? Has he sent you somewhere to do a great work for him? Guess what you do? Go do it. Be available. And watch what God does in your life. And if there's anything that we can do to pray with you, to pray for you and your ministry, to pray for you over the stresses of feeling like that people are going to say you selling out and you're breaking away from what other people have done before you and and you this is not how it's done everybody got something to say about what you are called to do Get, take it from someone who knows everybody's got something to say for what you are called to do you answer your calling you are the one that prayed to be sent now you're being sent so go do it's very easy Everybody else will understand, and they and their their believers, they will yield to Jesus Christ, and they will understand that He's using you just as they had prayed for Him to do. What a concept! Let it be done. If you're on that side, let it be done. And of course, if there's anything we can do to pray with you, to pray for you, on anything you're doing for this kingdom. Go to the website, get-prayer.com, and we will help you and pray with you. And if you need resources, we're trying to find resources. There's a lot of stuff out there on that internet that can help you out. So until next time, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we will talk to you next week. You take care.